we have Jennifer Sell with us to do a introduction to plain language. Jennifer is an English language instructor and workplace program coordinator in the Cultural Linguistic Services Unit of the Office of Human Resources at UW-Madison. She teaches verbal and written skills to English language learning employees to help them communicate more effectively and confidently on the job. With 11 years of experience in plain language training, consulting, and editing, she also enjoys working with native English speakers on strategies for clear communication. So we're really excited to have you with us, Jennifer, um, and I'll turn it over to you. Welcome, um, everybody. My name is Jen, and I am very happy to be here to talk to you a little bit about plain language. Um, as part of my job, I teach English language classes to employees at UW-Madison, uh, primarily custodial staff and food service workers, but also some, some research scholars. So I get the privilege of working with people from a great variety of cultural, educational, linguistic, and literacy backgrounds. Um, I also work with native English speakers on effective communication strategies like plain language. Um, I'm excited to be here because we've seen how plain language offers effective tools for everyday communication, no matter what the language background of your audience. People report that it saves time, energy, money, and frustration, and that they can put it into use right away. So hopefully today we'll have a, li sorry, a little bit of a chance to um, interact together using the chat. Uh, but before we actually define plain language for you, I want to show you a before after example that may help you feel it in a way. Um, so you're gonna see a before blue and an after red type example. Um, please don't read it, but just uh, notice how your gut feels um, about how it looks when you get it. Um, let's see here. There we go. My question for you is, which would you rather read? So once again, without actually reading the text, if you want to jot down in chat, um, do we have an initial reaction? Blue or red? After, people are saying after. Okay. Looks like most people are agreed. I feel that way too. Um, now take a little bit closer look. Which do you think readers will find easier to read, understand, act on, and remember? I think also red. Okay, so it looks like a consensus red. So let's think about why is that? What are, if we analyze the two a little bit, what are the things that stand out for you that make you feel that way? You could drop, drop that in chat if you'd like to. Bolded words direct the eyes. Yeah, the structure. Mm -hmm. Anything else come to mind? Simple. Bullet points, categories, action items. Great. Yeah, you've hit on a lot of the different things um, that we we often use. Um, there's a lawyer and plain language advocate named Brian Gardner, and so he recommends bolded headings um, as signposts for your readers. Um, here we've got underline as well. Sometimes plain language advocates uh, don't um, support the underline. It can look sometimes like links for people if it's online, um, but that bold can be really helpful um, to give the structure to the content. You mentioned bulleted lists. Um, bulleted lists naturally cause you as the author to think about your organization, and they automatically add white space, which is very important for most readers in terms of comprehension and motivation to read uh, material. We've got everyday words, uh, fewer words also, more personal pronouns, short, simple sentences, and a little bit more of a conversational tone. So all of that combined 
uh, can really motivate readers to want to engage with your content. People nowadays have a lot of choices, a lot of things demanding their attention. So that is part of it, is motivating your reader to engage with your content. And they're also going to be more likely um, to understand it and be able to act on it. All righty. So now we can go to our definition, and this is from plainlanguage.gov. Um, and I did provide a handout that you'll get with this website. It's a great first stop if you're interested in learning more about plain language. Plain language is communication that your audience understands the first time that they read or hear it. It's defined by results so that your audience can find what they need, understand what they find, and then use what they find to meet their needs. So we're gonna talk about some of those concrete strategies to engage individual people in our audience. And we need to keep in mind that what might be plain language to some readers might not be to others. Uh, one more thought before we dive in. Um, our goal here is not to go for perfection. There isn't one right way to express a mes message. What we really want to do is just improve the readability. Um, even if it's in a small way, that's a worthwhile goal. So let's jump into these practical ideas that I hope you can try out maybe even right away later this afternoon. Once again, these tips are great for people who speak English as their native language, as well as for people who don't. Benefits of plain language. The bottom line is that when you speak and write so that your, under, your audience can understand you the first time they read or listen to your message, you can save time, money, energy, and frustration explaining, re-explaining, and sometimes fixing mistakes. People often follow through better, faster, and lots of people are actually happier doing it. That can also impact any efforts you might have within your group um, to increase inclusion or diversity or engagement um, as one of your organizational goals. I did not come up with the term plain language. Uh, it's been around a long time. Uh, it's not just limited to the English language either. You can find a lot of materials online that have to do with um, Spanish, Portuguese, Dutch, German, lots of countries are working on different tactics because the languages are different, different, but the goals are the same. Here in the United States, the federal government took the lead, just brief history, um, beginning with an executive memo in 1998, and then the signing of the Plain Lang Writing Act of 2010, and then most recently, late last year, with the executive order and I have to look at my notes for this because it's long, ironically, um, executive order on transforming federal customer experience and service delivery to rebuild trust in government. The federal government has mandated that federal agencies use language that the public can understand and use when they're engaging with many federal documents and websites. So the federal government has invested a lot for a lot of the reasons that you'll see on this slide. All right. One of the very first things we want to keep in mind is that we need to consider our audience. Before we create our message, um, I like to think about this question. What does my audience need to know, think, or do after reading my message? Uh, we want to start with our call to action. What is the action we want them to take? And then see why it's important, but why it's important to the audience, not necessarily to me or the author. That reasoning could be different. Um, we're going to engage and involve our audience with examples and if it's appropriate for the document with images that are relevant and culturally appropriate to the people in that particular audience. We want to speak to individuals 
no matter how big the audience might be. And one way we do this is to use personal pronouns like I or we and you. Um, PlainLanguage.gov explains, quote, using you makes your message relevant to your audience and they're more likely to understand what their responsibility is. Using we makes your agency more approachable. Pronouns also shorten sentences so that your document is easier to read. Contractions are okay. Plain language favors contractions if that's going to make a more natural sounding speech. Um, we're motivated to act when we actually feel positive and when we know what we can do. So we like to frame messages in terms of what we can do rather than the more negative tone of something um, that we can't do. So if we've got a deadline to meet, what's the positive reason why we want to meet the deadline rather than the negative reason it might impact us? If we're able to lead with the positive, that might engage our audience more. So using a conversational tone helps you uh, build a connection with your reader and the people in your audience. And how can you judge if you're doing this? Well, try reading your material out loud. If you find yourself stumbling over something or something feels awkward, that might be a good place to reconsider the language you're using. We'd like to go for personal, positive, and realistic in tone. And probably one of the biggest recommendations, be real careful with acronyms and jargon. Acronyms and jargon can alienate and confuse readers, um, and that's going to make them less likely to act on your message or maybe even continue reading. So use acronyms and jargon only if you're sure that every person in your audience is familiar with them and it's convenient for all your readers. Um, if you'd like to, Drop uh, maybe an acronym or jargon that you find you use or that you see in your field uh, in the chat, just for just for interest. I can give you one example. Um, I'm an ELL teacher. I work with ELL students in an ELL program. Um, I would be lost without the acronym ELL among my team because it's a nice convenient short way to express English language learning or what a lot of people formerly thought of is and still think of as ESL. However, I need to remind myself that I can't refer to it as an ELL program to anybody out there who's not already in the know. So I and I'm already seeing what a lot of people say call alphabet soup coming up in the chat there. Thank you. It's interesting. I don't know what any of those things are so far. Word choice. So as long as we're talking about words, let's take a look at simple words. Plain language favors simple, everyday words over, over multisyllabic or fancy words. Um, take a look at this. For example, the word additional, three syllables we could use more. So for example, instead of um, saying or writing, um, oh, we need additional funding to complete our objective, we might say something like, uh, we need more money to finish the project. Jot down in chat, a uh, simple everyday word that you can think of for any of these on the list. Let's see what we could come up with. Once again, no right answer. Plus for more, nice. Help, assist, use, great. Any other ones? How about prior to, before is an easy word for that. In the event of if, oftentimes we can shorten um, 
multi-word phrases. Utilize, use, I'm seeing a lot of this in the chat. Obtain, get, implement, start, or set up. That's a little trickier. We'd have to think about the original intent due to the fact that, because, great. All right, let's take a look at a grammar tip. Probably the main grammar tip in plain language is to try to use active verb tenses instead of passive verb tenses. Here's an example. What's the verb in this sentence? The sealed envelope must then be sent via express mail to the address below. Jot it in chat if you want. Okay, so I'm seeing be sent. So we kind of have a or sent. Yeah, basically send is the verb. And because we're using the passive, we need be sent. Um, that's sometimes hard to spot. I found an interesting note on Pinterest that I like. Um, how to identify passive voice. If you can insert by zombies after the verb, you have passive voice. So we might see something like this. The sealed envelope must then be sent by zombies via express mail to the address below. We're gonna move the subject to the front and come up with something like what Julia just put in the chat. And I like how she added, please, to give it a nice positive tone. Please send sealed envelope by express mail too. Um, and I think maybe we could even take out the sealed, possibly redundant. I think most people will assume that you're gonna seal the envelope. Thank you for that suggestion. It looks great. Here's another one. All right, so that's what we talk about when we think about content or the meat of the message. Plain language also talks about the look of the message. When you take a quick peek at this image on the, on the screen right now, maybe jot one word in chat. How do you feel? Imagine you're driving, driving up on a Thursday at 1030 in the morning. And you need to figure out if you need to park. Anxious, confused, OMG, overwhelmed, not park, right, not parking here. You might just drive away, need a ladder to read. Yeah, it's overwhelming. And it's a little bit of an over-the-top example, but I did want to show you this. There's an artist in Los Angeles who has made it her mission to redesign parking signs. And this is an example of what she came up. Um, when you think about the time you might spend to find out, do I need, you know, can I park here at 1030 in the morning and for how long? I can find that information a lot sooner and I bet you can too. So just an example to kind of give you once again that gut feeling of how thoughtful design um, can really help people follow guidelines, rules, laws, or um, do what you, <laughs> yeah, save you some parking tickets to do what you're hoping they'll do. All right, so a couple of quick tips for that. Format for readability. Plain language for written communication. Once again, little extreme example to help you take a minute to, to take a look through this. Lots of people wouldn't go any further. They'd see something like this, block, um, maybe tough font, and they, would, they wouldn't read it right away, if at all. So I'll read it for you out loud. The look of a document is important and can impact the ease of understanding. Would you rather read documents that look easy to read, brief, important, and interesting, or ones that are not? Using a minimum 12 point font size and a typeface such as Times Roman can be more readable. Using lists and tables to present information is easier to digest than blocks of solid text. If I did that, if I practiced what I preached, I might end up with something that looks more like this. Ask yourself, is it going to be more motivating to read, easier to understand, more memorable, uh, more likely to be followed through on? We want to make the document interesting to look at, Use those bulleted lists to create white space and put those action steps up front. All righty. Let's think a little bit about how you might be able to use plain language in your work. Some folks have come up with examples like this. 
writing emails is probably the top way people talk about being able to put this into practice right away. I'm included in that group, um, especially with putting the most important information first. So quick example, if I was going to make a request to somebody in the past, I might put their... Um, put some background information, some justification, some reason, and, and really flesh it out and then end with my request. I've learned to flip that, put the request first in simple terms, and then if I want, I can give the justification and some background. That way I know that if my reader opens it, at the very least, they're going to see that all important request. And then they can choose if they want to get more information, read about the background or not. I found that that really helps get my response rate up. Describing policy policies, um, that should say, excuse me, typo, communicating healthcare messages, creating market marketing materials, training people, giving feedback, or reporting outcomes. If you can think of another way that you might use plain language um, to communicate more effectively in your work, feel free to put it in the chat for others to benefit from too. All righty. I want to show you one last example here before we wrap things up. Uh, I chose a COVID-related message here. Please take a minute to read this if your screen is large enough to do that. I'll read it quickly in case it's not. Protect your child with the COVID-19 vaccine. Give your child the best protection against COVID-19 by getting them vaccinated. The COVID-19 vaccine can help keep your child from getting sick, being hospitalized, or dying from COVID-19. The COVID-19 vaccine can also prevent your child from getting and spreading COVID-19 to others, including people who may be more at risk for severe disease, like grandparents or family members with health conditions. When your child is vaccinated against COVID-19, you don't need to worry about them missing out of school or other activities because of quarantine after close contact. Really important information. Um, let's talk about some of the positives here. There's already some great things that this message has going for it. Um, I'm going to tell you what I think they are rather than have you put them in the chat. We have a strong active first line, protect your child with the COVID-19 vaccine. That's really the crux of our message. And we've got that right up front. This message uses personal program, pronouns, your child, what you can do. And it definitely keeps the needs and the concerns of the targeted audience up front. Now, let's take a look or think about some of the plain language strategies we could use to make it even more effective. Feel free to drop things in chat if you'd like now, things that you might do, or take a look at this possible rewrite and tell me what you see that could make it more inviting and easier for people to read. I rewrote this and tried to keep all the essential information here. What do you notice about this that catches your eye? Put a couple things in chat. Of the strategies we may have seen. I see less words for sure. That's a really big thing. Plain language usually has fewer words more white space. The bullet things make, bullets make things more clear. We've got a, a bolded heading or title. Notice that the bullets all start with verbs, strong active verbs. When we use a bulleted list, we wanna keep that grammar consistent. Start with all verbs or start with all nouns. We're also not repeating 
a first word. We're not saying if your child gets the COVID-19 vaccine, colon, they have less chance. I'll let they don't have to miss. We're making sure that every common word is in that first lead-in sentence rather than repeating it in the bullets. Great. Um, you might notice that we're using uh, maybe simpler words, although the original sample did a great job about that. The line spacing can be very helpful. So just giving that white space within lines. Otherwise, I think you caught a lot there. So that's just one example of what a message might look like if we used some plainer language. All right, I know that we are looking to close um, soon. Would you like to do any breakout for a short time, organizers? Or I can answer some questions. Um, before you answer, I just want to thank you once again for uh, having me today, let you know that plain language, although it's a simple concept, it's not always easy to do, but it does get easier with practice. Um, all the time and effort you put in on the front end of crafting your message pays off dividends on the back end when people understand um, they're able to follow through, saves you time and energy, and it really does make your audience feel better and more engaged with the content.